There's a general rule when it comes to feedback, and I think this is one of the things that is most challenging for an individual to do in the moment, and yet the most important thing that we can possibly do when we receive feedback, positive or negative, and that is make your first response some form of acknowledgement. Thank you. It, obviously, it's easier to do if it's positive feedback, but even if it's critical feedback, start with gratitude. Start with acknowledgement. Thank you for your opinion. Thank you for voicing your thoughts, whatever it happens to be, so that we create an environment where we are open to receiving what individuals have to say. You can decide later what you do with the feedback. You don't have to like the feedback. You don't have to act upon the feedback. But keeping that line of communication open to receive the feedback signals to others that you are a person for whom individual growth is important and also that you've provided space to make the other person feel heard. And again, you don't have to agree in order to make someone feel like you've heard them. I think that's a really important distinction to mention. One thing that I want to touch on that is a, a common misconception around feedback is the sandwich method of positive, negative, positive, right? What happens when we sandwich the negative criticism in the middle? When we lead with positive, we're sort of, um, I call it the free hugs tunnel. You know, you see this dark, scary tunnel. It says free hugs on the outside. It's like you've put them in the free hugs tunnel where you said, oh, Marcus, you're great. I love your podcast. You're doing such a phenomenal job. So now you're like, oh, thanks, Betsy. That's wonderful. And then I hit you with the negative. And it's like, but wait, what? And then I come back and I support with the positive. So the next time, you and I are having a conversation and I give you a compliment, you're gonna be waiting for the other shoe to drop. So even though, it, again, great intention, poor execution when we use the sandwich method, because then what it conditions the other person to do is to be less receptive or more suspicious of our positive feedback because they've experienced that sandwich before and they're waiting for the negative that's coming. An easier way to deliver negative feedback, especially, is to, to let them know it's coming saying, hey, Marcus, there's something that I want to talk with you about. And it's important that I that I share this with you because I value our relationship. I really love your podcast. I want it to be extremely successful. And so I need to tell you something that may be difficult to hear. Now you've set them up to receive. You're saying, okay, you know, like put your protective gear on. This is going to be a little tough. And you've articulated why it's important because I value our relationship. I want your podcast to be successful. So small shifts, again, that we can make in our communication that allow people to be more open to hearing something that may be difficult for them to hear, but is necessary for their growth and development.